What's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today's a very exciting day. So Loki Season 2 Episode 3 came out and oh my god, this was a great episode. I am insanely excited. Like this show is doing so good. It's so good. In comparison to the last like three or four Marvel shows which have kind of sucked, it feels so good to finally have one back that is really good and knows its own self-identity and knows what it's trying to do. This to me felt so reminiscent of the first season. Um, I love a lot of the tricks that they did here with the music because like there were time more time appropriate versions of the loki theme song in this the marvel opening logo set to like the older style of music was so good like there was a lot of fun to be had in this episode let's talk about it now imagine you were secretly having a conversation about the god of mischief that's a loki loki talk <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, I had very I, I had no idea what was going on with this episode, but right before I actually went up to watch the episode, I saw that Marvel had posted a scene from them at the World's Fair or whatever, or, and I was incredibly excited because I knew that that meant it was the Chicago episode, things are happening, we're going to be at the World's Fair, we're probably going to see H.H. Holmes, which we didn't, but he was referenced a couple times, which was great. We got a Baldur the Brave reference, which was insanely cool. I was not expecting that. That caught me off guard. And um, I really loved everything about that aspect of the episode. For one, the fact that um, Mobius did a good job of like reminding Loki, like, you're one of them. That's so cool. And I love it because like, Mobius in that moment is kind of like having this moment where he's realizing, you know, oh, sometimes I like don't even think about the fact that you are literally like an Asgardian god, right? And um, I think that that's just like so real because like sometimes watching this show, he feels like just a regular human being. And I feel like they're really finally like dialing back on the fact that like he is insanely powerful. He has like really, really powerful magic. He can do a bunch of really cool stuff. He does a bunch of like cool mischievous things in this episode. And it is so nice seeing Loki using his magic again and um it's just a whole lot of fun i love all the stuff where he's like quickly making somebody disappear and then making them reappear later like he is so much fun and um i really like that this version of loki really is feeling a lot different from just like the loki we saw in ragnarok or like one of the lokis we saw later in time because he really didn't genuinely does see like it's what he genuinely seems like if you were to pluck the random loki from 2012 and then you know to put him through all the stuff that he's been through. And it's like, it's great. I'm loving it. It's fantastic. Um, I think that Tom Hiddleston still gives such a strong performance. Um, Mobius in this, such a strong performance. And I absolutely love the fact that they rode a tandem bicycle. Um, at first, I was kind of upset because, like, um, you hear Loki say absolutely not to Mobius when he's like, hop on. And later in the scene, when you can see them in the background riding up on it, it made me so happy. Because, like, that's such, like, a, like, blink and you miss it type moment. But it was, it was fantastic. And I, I love that so much. Um, and I just, I love the entire feel of this show. Because the original season, we really love all the little field missions with Mobius and Loki. And, like, Mobius is very much, like... I just want to go out here and I want to do the stuff that I want to do. And he likes to have fun with it. He really likes going and enjoying the times and like really um, living in the moment until, you know, it comes down to business. And I love it in this scene where he's like just having a great time at the World's Fair because it's like a really cool carnival type thing. It's something people don't get to experience much. And he's just like having a great time with it. Um, some things that I love about this episode, Victor Timely. Oh, I love the accent. I love the voice. I love the way that he's speaking with a little bit of a stutter um, when he's giving his presentation and he's putting like a bunch of dramatic pauses into it. It's fantastic. Like this feels like such a new character. And I love the fact that Jonathan Majors is able to make each version of Kang feel completely different because this genuinely feels like somebody who would have been around back in those days. Somebody who's like had to educate themselves. So he's not entirely smart and he doesn't fully understand like certain things, but like he's, he's a genius. And he's smart and you have those undertones where it's like, you can tell this guy's brilliant. He's just not um, at like the highest potential that he can have. He's really like backed up by the times. And I think that it's great. Like he's so good in this. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, finally seeing what Ravona Renslayer and Miss Minutes have been up to is great. And uh, something that I really like about it is in this episode, it really feels like um, this Ravona Renslayer is the one who literally just left the TVA at the end of the, the last season. Um, it literally seems like we're finally picking up right where she left off. It does, doesn't seem like there's a lot of hidden things that we've missed between her and Miss Minutes, which I really enjoy because something that I was a little concerned about was that, like, they haven't showed her in a, the first two episodes. So, like, anything she would have been potentially doing in the first two episodes, it would have been like, well, what is she doing? But now it seems like this is all she's been doing, which is great. Um, a couple of things that we 
um, didn't get in this episode that I'm a little confused about. All of a sudden, Brad Wolf doesn't exist, and I have a feeling we're not going to see him at all the entire rest of the show, and I'm kind of confused about why they basically made him the main character of the last episode, if that was all he was going to be in the entire show. Like, that's that to me is still a little off-setting. Um, and then another thing is, like, we don't spend a whole lot of time in the TVA, so, like, um, all the stuff with 100B15 that we've been doing this season, we haven't seen much of, Casey we didn't see much of, and um, OB we didn't see much of, which is cool, right? Like, obviously focus on different characters for different episodes and stuff like that. But, like, it just, I feel like they have a lot of characters now, and it's starting to be, like, a thing where it's, like, you can tell certain characters, they were like, yeah, can you only have this character in the show for a couple of episodes? And they were like, okay, let's do it. Um, but I like it. I like what they're doing with it. It's still a whole lot of fun. I like the fact that um, Sylvie and Loki are, like, really, like, kind of having to take their time to, like, get back to, you know, having, like, a kind of, like, friendship and a connection with each other. I think by the end of the season, they will probably be back together, like, kind of as, like, lovers, maybe just as friends. But um, as of right now, I really like this, the like, conflict and how it's really being dragged out because, like, Loki, what we need to remember, Loki ruined something that Sylvie and spent her entire life working on and um like Sylvia has every right to be pissed at him and to absolutely hate him and like the fact that they are having a lot of beef and she's not letting it go simply makes me so excited like this tension between these two characters is fantastic and I absolutely love watching them like fight and watching them have their different arguments um I will say this is one of the first times in the entire show though there, there were some dialogue moments that I was like that didn't feel like it was written very well because um when Loki and Sylvie are arguing in, like, the Ferris wheel booth, Loki doesn't really have much of an argument. He just keeps saying the couple, same couple of things over and over again about, like, it's the TVA, the TVA, the TVA. And it's, like, drilling into Sylvie's mind that he's fully, like, a part of the TVA now. Which, like, makes sense, but also, it just feels off. Like, something about it just doesn't feel right to me. And speaking of feeling off, oh... My god, now I'm going to talk about the star of this sh th this episode, Miss Minutes. What? Oh, okay, I'm so confused. So a lot of big things get revealed. For one, we figure out exactly what her origin story is, and something that I like is a lot of people are saying that, like, um, there's a good chance that Miss Minutes is not even, like, telling the truth about the stuff that she knows, because she seems like somebody who would be, like, all-knowing, and she seems like one of the only people who has, like, a full general idea of what's going on around, and, like, Miss Minutes could 100% be BSing shit. Like, there's not a single person alive who can fact-check Miss Minutes, and I think that that's Loki gonna play, like, such a huge factor, because, um, I'm not gonna say that, like, Miss Minutes is, like, a Ultron variant or something like that, but, like, Miss Minutes is an AI, artificial intelligence, that's kind of a projector, but can also interact with the real life. She is insanely powerful, but she really wants a body now, and a lot of people, you know, are obviously going to think that it's just because, you know, she was in love with he who remains and she really wanted you know a body so she could be with him or whatever and it definitely gives off that vibes so a lot of the times when like Ravona and Victor are having moments where it seems like they're gonna have like some romantic um connections um you can see Miss Minutes like getting jealous but I really feel like it's something a lot deeper than that I really think that this show is probably gonna end and Miss Minutes is going to be the villain and what's going to happen is Miss Minutes is going to get like an actual like body and she's basically gonna be like kind of like if Ultron actually got into the vision body that he was trying to do and it's just going to be insanely powerful, but in a human form. That's my assumption. I don't know, obviously, if that's going to actually happen or not. But um, that's something I could see happening. And uh, man, she just feels so threatening in this episode. Like, there's some things she does where it's like, she is completely unhinged. You, you have no idea what she's going to do. She is a total wild card. And I love it. So um, that's basically all that I wanted to talk about. Um, obviously, there was a lot to take in in this episode. Um, I had a lot of, like, moments that I was really confused about. Like, literally everything with Miss Minutes and Ravona. I'm so confused because there were a lot of moments where it kind of seemed like uh, Miss Minutes' goal was actually to set up um, Ravona and Victor Timely. And then, like, it seemed like it was kind of like a Back to the Future type moment where, like, um, they accidentally, like, split up their parents or whatever. And then they needed to, like, make sure that their parents fell in love. It kind of felt like that at first. Like, Miss Minutes knows that in order to be created, Ravona and um, a Kang variant needed to work together to make her. And it seemed like that was something that was happening. And then all of a sudden, she was, like, so jealous. And that came so out of left field that I was like, what just happened? But I don't know. I like it. The mystery aspect really feels back with this episode. A lot of the fun, weird music came back. Um, this was a really great time period piece that I really enjoyed. And um, Sylvie is great and threatening 
and seeing the end of time being as like withered away and as like destroyed as, as it is i was kind of expecting to see like a kang variant or something show up there i don't know but i'm really excited but yeah that was it for this video guys hopefully you guys enjoyed it thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out i love it appreciate you guys and if you liked it feel free to like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys in the next one peace out bow 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 he wanted me to go but first i did this we planned a day then we did this want to be in love with the girls with the kisses don't give a damn i'll rid this i like this when i run the distance i run a fine pit and go for listings i want to live within the business buy more than what's on the clearances you're getting big because i know you're a physicist i want to deny this shit i'm unlimited